Welcome to Mr. E Defense Academy presents Concealed Carry Basics, Part 7, Holsters and Storage. There's several different types of holsters, uh, inside the waistband or IWB, outside the waistband, OWB, belly band, ankle, shoulder, small of the back, fanny pack or purse carry, or pockets, pocket holsters. So these are, these are different holsters. They all form basically the same function. A, a holster is designed to keep the firearm safe, but at the ready when you need it. So inside the waistband, there are various different types of inside the waistband holsters. And really, the type of holster that you want, it's personal preference, and it depends partly on the purpose. If the purpose is for concealed carry, inside the waistband is a pretty popular choice. Um, recently, a lot of people have chosen what's called an appendix carry type of inside the waistband. As you can see in this image right here, that's what it is. Basically, the, the firearm is, is holstered in the front part, what we call the 12 o'clock position, and uh, in the appendix carry there. That's what that's called. You also get like the 3 o'clock position. There's various, like I said, various types of inside the waistband holsters. Outside the waistband, uh, this is where, for example, duty holsters would happen. So kind of like this one right here. You can see there's a, a special extra strap that's going to hold it in place, make it harder for someone to take it from you. When you're open carrying a firearm, it, you typically will use an outside the waistband holster. And for competition shooting, outside the waistband is what most people will use as well. Uh, you can use an outside the waistband for concealed carry. You can see in this image right up here, uh, but it requires a cover garment that will, that will fully cover the holstered firearm. So outside the waistband. A belly band is a type of holster that basically it is what it sounds like. It's it's a, a stretchy band, uh, usually with Velcro that will that will close it off. But basically, it's got a, a stitched in part for the handgun to be holstered. And one of the advantages of the belly band is it doesn't require the wearing of a belt. So, for example, outside the waistband, it's hooked to a belt. Inside the waistband, it also hooks to a belt. The belly band uh, basically provides its own belt. So you could wear a belly band holster with even gym shorts that really don't have any need for a belt or anything like that. So the belly band, it can be worn pretty much. You, know, you can do appendix, you can do three o'clock, you can do, basically you put it wherever, wherever it's comfortable. Ankle holster is what it sounds like. Uh, it's a holster at the ankle and it's covered uh, then with the pant leg. There are various types of ankle holsters. Uh, one of the limitations on ankle holster is that it needs to be typically pretty small handgun in order to conceal it with an ankle holster. Shoulder holsters, there's various types of shoulder holsters. There's a vertical shoulder holster and a horizontal shoulder holster. Uh, they usually involve straps that will keep it in place, allowing you to then draw the firearm. Uh, often you would want with a shoulder holster uh, when you're wearing being able to wear a jacket that can uh, conceal the firearm. Small back is a holster that's it's it's a type of outside the waistband, but it goes behind you. Now lately, this particular type of carry uh, has been discouraged because if you fall backwards and land on your firearm like this, it can actually injure your spine right there in the in the small back position. But some people find it uh, the most comfortable position. So as long as you're careful, uh, that's an option. Fanny pack or purse carry. Uh, again, basically, it's what it sounds like. It's, it's holstered in a fanny pack. Now, this isn't just a loose firearm in any random fanny pack. These particular fanny packs have built-in holsters that are designed specifically to holster a firearm. You don't want to put just a loose firearm in a purse or a fanny pack that's not designed for it. You can, in fact, if you want, use a pocket holster. And again, you never put a gun in your pocket without a pocket holster to cover the trigger. Uh, but if you put, put your gun in a pocket holster, you can then put it into a regular purse or a fanny pack. That's the, the main thing is you want that trigger guard covered. And so the built-in holster of these fanny packs uh, protects that and, and makes it safer. And a pocket holster, the same thing. Before I just stick a gun in my pocket, I would make sure it's in a pocket holster and then placed in the pocket. Now, some safe concealment considerations. A firearm should always be in a holster or a gun case. 
if the firearm is in view of the public, care should be taken so that it is only accessible to the permit holder. So if you're going to open carry, make sure that it's got an extra layer of protection so that someone can't just reach up behind you and grab it. A handgun should not just be thrown into a glove box, under the seat of the car, or into a drawer. The permit holder is responsible for their firearm at all times. And you can, you know, replace gun owner with permit holder. Okay, but the, the gun owner is responsible for their firearm at all times. Now, safe storage of firearms and ammunition. Firearms should be stored unloaded. Now, storage is when the firearm is not available for immediate use. Storage is different from staging, where if I have a firearm, uh, say for home defense, and have it staged, it's still secure, but it can be stored loaded because that firearm is actually in use, even though I'm not actively using it at the time. So it's important to keep that, keep that in mind. Recommendation is that firearms and ammunition be stored separately. Some storage options include safes, locked cases, safe proofing devices. The need for safety does not end just because you do not have the firearm with you. Methods of child proofing do not store the firearm where it's visible and make sure the storage area is not accessible to children. Keep it locked up, keep it safe at all times. So storing versus staging. So firearms should be stored unloaded. Storage is when the firearm is not available for immediate use. A staged firearm is one that you keep quick, keep around for quick retrieval if needed for self-defense or home defense situation. This is a firearm that is in use as it is kept at the ready in case of emergency need. As such, it may be stored loaded. If you stage a firearm or more than one, then you must take extra care that it's not accessible to unauthorized persons, including children. Biometric safes exist in a variety of sizes that allow only an authorized user to access the firearm yet maintains quick and easy access when needed. Keeping it hidden inside a drawer, bedside table, or closet shelf is not enough. So some of the safe, safe storage options, they vary. Things from trigger locks that come with, with firearms, every firearm you purchase new will come with a trigger lock of some kind. So you can, you can just put the trigger lock on there. There you go, the, the gun is inoperable uh, while a trigger lock is attached. There are biometric safes, there are large gun safes, gun cabinets, smaller safes, uh, quite a variety of safe storage options. The main thing is, as a firearm owner, you want to make sure that your firearm is only accessible to authorized people, and that it is not accessible to unauthorized people at all times. That is a very important responsibility that we take upon ourselves as lawful firearms owners.